this uh, rooster, and the gang promised me a limousine with a show. This pie crust to you, ain't it, Cesar? Shut up, you sap. We ain't out of debt. It's ten miles to town. Well, so long. I hope I never see you again. Boy, I hate these country prisons. I hate all prisons. The food is bad. Yeah, well, listen, the next time I'm gonna... There ain't gonna be any next time, but for me. No, what are you gonna do for a living? I thought I'd start a chicken farm. You can stop with a hundred eggs, and by saving the pullets at the end of a year, you'll have 10,000 eggs. Yeah? Listen, get out and fix them, What's you? the matter? I think we got a tire. Flat tire? That's luck for you. I don't see any flat tire. Oh, no, well, buy a mirror. was as wicked as you. But yea, verily, there's no sinner among you what I can't call brother. And you know how I got lost in crime and sin? Bad company. But I found the error of my ways. I found that crime don't pay. And now I'm happy and love the whole world. Yeah, even the, the depraved wretch what led me into sin, even him I love and forgive. And remember, brothers, crime don't Hey. No, sir. Crime don't pay. And verily, I say to you, even the depraved house would let me into sin. Even him I love and forgive. And there is a blow of vengeance coming. What? On all sinners, what knows no mercy, and there is retribution for all. And there is thunderbolts coming from the sky on your head unexpected. And verily I say to you, the wages of sin is a punch into joy, you little... <laughs> So that's what you're in for. For three months, I've been trying to get a piccolo player, and all they send up is saxophone. Just a lot of punks, that's all. Oh, now that's a shame. What'd you do, boy? Rob your mama's back. Oh, kids, what do you think of that? Get the paint on this guy. I've been in this jail 40 years. And the samples they send up here gets worse and worse. It's getting to be a day nursery. They wouldn't even allow those kind of guys in here in my time. Well, how'd they keep them out? Blackball them? You know what they'd have called Big Pete in my day? What? A sissy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was men in those days. Men with needles in their chests. 
man like myself. Come on over, play ball. Just one week before the big game, and I had to go and pardon the pitcher. It's politics. That's what it is, politics. Somebody higher up don't want us to win. You know who it is? The governor. Jessup. Well, if it ain't little more, so you're here. Yes, I'm here, and you're here too, where you belong. Why, you got me all wrong, kid. I lost more money on that horse than you did. Did you, Jessup? Did you lose your position and money and friends? And mother? She died at my trial. Oh. If it hadn't been for you... Shut up, you little swine. You were a thief long before I knew you. That's a lie! Take it back, dear! Cut it out, cut it out! Go on, scram! Come on, don't take it so hard. I can't help it. How did your family feel? Well, they don't know. I changed my name. And they think I'm in China. How'd you do that? Well, I got friends out there. They forward my letters home and cable my folks once a month. I'll see you around. I work in the office there. Got a lot of new fish coming in, you know. Associates, inmates. Come on, Flint. Buck up, boy. Come on, you fellas, will you? Come on. All right, Pop. What's the hurry? I got plenty of time. 30 years. Nick, only 20 for me. Say, do you think they'd mind if I was to join in? Can you play ball? Why, sure. Well, go on and get over there, then. Why, Pop will plaster you with kisses. Hurry up! And this is the men's yard. Aren't you afraid here with all these dreadful characters? Oh, dear, no. They're just like little children to me. In fact, to all the welfare workers. Watch it. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Matthew? How do you do, dear? So jolly to see you again. Uh, I missed you terribly last Thursday. Had some friends up from the city. A charming people. Uh, they were very disappointed not to meet you. Well, cheerio. See you again. You see? And who is he? Electrical genius. Wiretapper. How do you? Say strangler. Now we'll go over to the welfare rooms. You see, they're right over there. Yes. Oh, I... Oh, don't oh, 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 be afraid. He's just amusing little Jean. The warden's daughter. Jean, uh, hello to my friends. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Have you a kiss for Mrs. Matthew? Yes, Mrs. Matthew. I gave... The dog? Uh, um, let's go over to the welfare room. Uh, okay, what's next, Betty? Try this one, Jean. Oh, I can do that. No, you can't. Here's one you can do. Walk on your ear, Jean. No, of course not. Thank you. 
We have jobs out there, three of us boys, and... Well, then this came up. And you threw that over to work here? No, you don't understand. I don't work here. I belong here. A convict? Yes. But we call ourselves inmates. Gee, that's tough. You don't look it. Well, neither do you. Well, tell me, uh, what... What did you do? A fight. Just before the boat sailed. And the other boy... What a rotten break. <clears throat> Mary? No. Engaged? Say, is that on the card? Oh, no. What are you in for? Shoplifting. I was afraid. Sure, we all were sprained. What's yours? Spitting in the river. Gee, I didn't know they could pinch you for that. Why, you told Mrs. Massey it was for winking at a cop. For not winking at a terrible creature. Well, at least she don't scare them to death with black Is it necessary that I wait in here with these other persons? Cops yep. already. Well, it was all arrested, and here we are. Hey. And I can see. Who's she? Laverne. I don't see what men see as her. Oh, is that the love scene? The extortion? Extortion is? Yeah. Honey, were you in the circus? <laughs> I'm so sorry for them, really. And these are the women. Come, girls. Yes, sir, boy. Yes, sir. Okay, Captain. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say, there's nobody, a lady's allowed in here. Yeah, so I see. Hey, buddy, see the warden. Hey, 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 h
Mm. And if you don't mind, I'd like a nice airy cell, you know. Plenty of windows and a nice sun exposure. Southern exposure. Yeah, mm. you don't mind. You know, and then mm. I'd like uh, a double bed sure. and running water, you know. I'd like, well, see, I'm not boring you, am I? No. No, go on. Out of here. <laughs> okay, Warden. See you at supper. Beans again, I suppose. Southern exposure. Running water. Not too high up. Sunshine. Say, if I had a cell like that, I'd sleep in it myself. <laughs>
sad. On second thought, I remember. There were rumble seat on that car, all right. Oh, shut up. How are you today, Genesis? How is your Mrs. Nancy? Well, Julie, quite an honor, it seems to me, to be selected to instruct the daughter. Of course, it's quite against my better judgment, but uh, I hope it'll turn out all right. Thank you, Mrs. Nancy. Two and two is four, four and four is eight. Sour grapes, kid. Sour grapes. Mrs. Riley, can Judy and I go in the yard and take a walk? Surely, dear. Go right along. Thank you. Oh, oh how do you do, do, Mrs. Massey? Oh, what a beautiful apple. Stray, <laughs> such good-looking girls, all of them. Not a homely one among them. Oh, oh thank, thank you, Mrs. Massey. Massey. Years ago, when I started doing welfare work, it was quite the reverse. Well, in those days, women wore long skirts. The only ones that were acquitted were the ones that were smart enough to cross their legs during the trial. Oh, really? the... What a peculiar psychology. Have an apple, dear. Oh, thank uh, you, Mrs. Oh, Massey. And, and I have a magazine for you, oh, my dear. thank you, Mrs. Massey. Oh, and here's the latest style magazine for you. Thank you, Mrs. Girl, Massey. Girl, isn't this jolly? Do we? The Battle of Manila. Ah, you're gonna take a little run. Why don't you leave me alone? I haven't done anything ah, to you. Good for you. What did I have? <laughs> Let him alone. What do you mean, let him alone? I said let him alone. Scram, kid. What are you gonna do? Make a favor to that punk around here? I'm gonna get your hands off him. Say, who are you to tell me to keep my hands off of anybody? What's the matter, Steve? What's all the trouble? My pop and I came along here. We found this big lump, and he gave me an argument. He thinks everybody's scared of him. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's scared, scared of him around here, are they, big boy? You wanna bother with them guys? It's a waste of breath. I know, but look out for your arm. Look out yeah. for your arm. Hey, the aim gay is waiting at the eight gay. Thanks. Don't mention it. Hey, Steve. I want you to go down there. Keep away from that girl. Getting put in the your parole. I wouldn't take any chances. Yeah, listen, kid, he's right about that. You do what Pop says, kid, and you'll never go wrong. I'll go. Hey, some guy hit a great big lug out there, right on the button. Hey, buddy, I'm sorry. I butted into something. I didn't know. She didn't want to see me. She wants to see you. Me? Yeah. Say, I didn't know that you two were fond of each other. Oh, gee, I don't know how, how fond she is of me, but I think she's a fine girl. Well, ain't you never said anything to her? No, I haven't had a chance. You know what the rules are. Oh, we've <laughs> a couple of times in the window. Well, you come on over. I'd like to have you meet her. Yeah, but listen, if she's caught talking oh, to me, you know... Oh, don't let that worry. I'll take care of all that. Hey, love, come here. No, he means... Say, who do you think you are ordering me around? What do you want? Judy's got a boyfriend. Judy's got a... Hmm. Judy, there's a couple of fellas out in the reception room to see you. 
I got the flash right here. Come on. Jean, come over here. Your Uncle Danny wants to tell you a fairy story. Oh, Danny. Why does a chicken cross the street? To get on the other side. Said you were being paroled in a few days. Yes, I am. I just wanted to say goodbye to you before you left and thank you for being so sweet to me that day in the office. Well, that's all right. I'm... I'm trying to get to see you, too, because... Well, I... I have a lot of things I want to talk to you about. You remember that first day in the office when... when I asked you if you were engaged? Yes. I said, is that on the card? Yeah. Well, it, I mean, you know it wasn't. But I wanted to know because... Well, are you engaged? I'm not. I... No, I'm not. What would I like to be? To you. All I got for this one, Gene, this is a hard one. Why does the President of the United States wear a high silk hat? To keep it warm. I'm on the level, too, Steve. But I guess it, it can't be. Why not? Well, I've, I've heard all about your home and your family and... Well, I'm... I'm just... Well, now, wait a minute. That's just storybook stuff about the rich boy and the poor girl not being able to marry. It doesn't count here at all. When we get out of here, we could, we're just going to be a couple of ex-convicts. And that's not storybook stuff. We got to start all the bottom of the ladder. And I'd, I'd like for us to start together. Well, that is it. If you're fond enough of me. I am fond of you, Steve. I'm more than fond of you. If there was five birds in a tree, and St. Louis and I shot one of the boys, how many of the boys would be left in the tree? None, because they'd all fly away. Jean, you ain't been reading a book, have you? No. I can't understand. I'll leave you an answer tonight. Peter Kenwood. You. Hey, Judy, tell him not at home. Fellas, <laughs> Miss Fields, two minutes. <laughs> well, darling, here I am. Just three months too late, Crosby. And never mind the darling. But, Judy. I didn't come in here because I wanted to see you. I came in here because I wanted to tell you what a dirty rat you are. You don't understand. Yes, I do understand now. The business was a little shady. I didn't know it was going to land me in jail. Well, it's finished. I'm paying for it. What could I do? What could you do? You could have stayed and faced it out, not run away like a coward and leave me to take the rat. Now listen, Judy. I've got friends and influence, and I've got some dough left. I can get you out, and we can go away. We, we can't do anything. I'm through with you and all your kind. Now listen, there's a fine clean kid inside, and he's stuck on me. And I'm crazy about him. He gets out of here in a week. He's going to wait for me. And we're going to start together. At the bottom of the ladder. Steve and I. Steve. Yes, that's the name of the kid that's waiting in there for me. He's waiting in there now for my answer. Okay, so late time's him. up. Dear Mom. Oh, the right. Jenny, sure, let's get to him. Don't forget. Yes, I'm leaving. Oh, I'm sorry. 
What's going on? Signal. Yeah? Yeah, from the woman's quarter. Oh, is that how they do it? Sure, didn't you know that? With all the cans you've been in. Yeah, but I never stayed in any one of them long enough to find those things out. What does it say? Wait a minute. Message? Gate. shoulder when I'm reading Steve's mail. This is from a lady. Hey, Steve, come here a minute, will you? Congratulations, Steve. For what? Why, well, you're... Uh, I uh, got a little note here for you. I'm engaged. No. Yeah. Judy. No. Yeah. Hey, you fellas, you didn't read this, did you? No. no. You're my boy. Thanks, Warden. I, uh, I know it's against the rules, but could I give you a message for a girl here, a prisoner? See, we're, well, we're engaged. And I want her to know that I'm, I'm going to work hard for her and make something of myself. So that when she's free, I'll... Now, just you wait a moment. Wait till I get a pencil, and I'll write that message down. <laughs> Well, all right, bring it to me. How am I going to get it? I write every week. I won't write at all. Your family mustn't see letters with this postmark. They mustn't know. Don't worry. I'll stick it out. It's only five months. You won't forget? Yes, I, I found a pencil. Now, what was that message? What, what I wanted to say was, thanks. So long, Dean. Come back. Come on, 
gonna miss you. The kids, will you? You bet I will, Steve. Right. Kid. You bet. Oh. Oh. son and I happen to have a mutual acquaintance. Yes? A Miss Fields. A Miss Judith Fields. She was formerly in my employ. Really? How interesting. Yes, isn't it? But perhaps you'd come and have supper with us tonight. Mother, I'd be delighted. It's all right, dear. Sophie always has enough for a dozen, you know. You'll come, won't you? Well, thank you very much. Goodbye, Mr. Sterling. Goodbye. Supper. Thank you. I shall be there most promptly. See you this evening. Oh, I'm going to open up a branch office here. Of course, I shall miss him. She was a most valuable assistant. But as you know everyone in town, you may be able to take her position. that Steve was in stir, huh? What'll I do? You don't do nothing, kid. Just leave it to me. Say, listen, Judy. Yeah? yeah. Are you really stuck on Steve? Yeah. There's, uh, no chance for a guy to muscle in there, is there? I'm on the level. I really love him. Okay, baby. What does M O R O N spell? Why, why that spells moron. I passed a hundred percent. Hey, look. You was never in New England, were you? No. Well, you're going now. Hello, fellas. 
As you know, we're gathered here tonight for our annual entertainment, which is sponsored by our good friend, Mrs. Madley. Also, we have as our honored guests a number of people from the outside, which we take great pleasure in welcoming. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I take great pleasure in introducing our master of ceremony, one who is a master of ceremonies, one who has acted in a similar capacity in a great many institutions of this kind, both in this country and abroad, and one whom we hope to have with us for many, many years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, I take great pleasure in introducing our master of ceremonies, honest John Jessup. Mr. Warden, ladies and gentlemen, I can scarcely find gratitude in having been selected as master of ceremony for this delightful performance. It is a very unusual compliment. And now, with your kind permission, I take infinite pleasure in presenting that ever popular team, black and blue. Anyway, kid. 
Allow me to present St. Louis and Company. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, they've asked me to do my little bit for the entertainment here tonight. I can't sing and I can't dance, but I'll tell you what I will do. I'll do an act that I used to do when I was a little kid and ran away with a circus. This is a knife throwing act. And I use a human target. And the gentleman that's kindly consented to act as my target tonight is none other than my old partner and pal, Dan Amora Dan. You guys want to be quiet out there. I got to have absolute quiet. Are all the lights in this theater controlled from that switchboard right there? That's right, sir. Thanks very much. Throw a little more light on Danny's head. All right, sir. Now listen, you guys. You want to remember that I haven't done this act for a long time. I'm liable to make a few slips. You got to overlook that. I'll do my best, though, to go through the act without any serious injury.
everybody that I was an ex-convict. But now that you've started to swindle my mother... Swindle? You told me all about you. Told me about every crooked boo. Well, what do you want me to do? I want you to get out of town. Well, I won't get out of town. And I'll tell your mother that you weren't in China, that you were in jail. An ex-convict. You do that? Well, you won't have to. Because I'll tell myself. Now, you little jailbird! All right, I am a jailbird. I was in jail, I learned how to handle crooks like you. Now, you've been threatening me, now I'll threaten If you don't get out of this town by tonight, I'll kill you. We're not intruding, are we? Oh, no, uh, not at all, gentlemen. Uh, won't you sit down? Our business can wait. Hmm? Glad to know you, Mr. Jones. Well, what can I do for you? I wanted to have a little business talk with you. Well, you'll have to make it pretty short, because he's leaving town. That's too bad. Well, I'll see you when you come back. He'll be back. Oh. Well, that's, that's tough. Oh, say, by the way, which is the best hotel in town? <laughs> well, there, there isn't any best. They're all terrible. But I'd like very much to have you stay at my house. Oh, no, no. I don't want to put you to all that trouble. <laughs> it won't be any trouble at all. I say, really, I'd, I'd like to have you meet my mother and my sister. Give you a nice room and put him in the garage. Swell. And I know how you traveling men like to get a good home-cooked meal. Ah, boy, now you're talking. Say, I haven't had a home-cooked meal in years. Uh, it's been quite some time now. <laughs> okay, then. That's so okay. we go right over. Fine and dandy. Come on, come along there, brains. There are millions to be made in this stock. Pack that up and save it for me, will you, boy? I'll be back later. Crosby, I'll be down at the train tonight to make sure you don't miss it. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Crosby. What are you trying to do? Huh? Don't shoot guns from New York. What about them? I never saw them before. Say, have you got some new... You're not going to cut us in? Now listen, cutie. As long as you're as pretty as you are... Oh. Listen, if you even try to double-cross us, you know what'll happen to you. Oh, shut up. Get out of my way. I'm busy.
Come on in, fellas. Hello, Mother. Hello, dear. That is Mother. I, I brought a couple of friends of mine home to spend the weekend with me. You don't mind, do you? Oh, no, of course not. Bring them right in. Oh, all right. Come on in, boys. Mother, I want you to meet Mr. Uh, Jones. Do you belong to the Salem Joneses, New Bedford Joneses? Well, I'll tell you, ma'am, I come from New York State. Uh, yes, you see, and uh, uh, this is Mr. Uh, Danny Mora. Hey, where's baby? Danny Moore. I uh, think she's upstairs. Oh, hello, Mom. sis. Sis, allowed? I want you to meet a couple of friends of mine. This is my sister. This is Mr. Jones and Mr. Mara. How do you do? How do you do? Thank you. Now, uh, come right in, children, and make yourself perfectly at home. Uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. Well, you sit here, will you? Thank you very much. I'll take your head. Oh, you. And I'll take your head. You can sit right here. <laughs> I hope you'll make yourself perfectly at home. And... Uh, you may smoke if you like. <laughs> Steve smokes. I caught him once smoking corn silk when he was a little boy. Hey, Steve, that was wrong. Oh, well, anyway, he's grown up to be a fine young boy. I'll help Sophie get supper, supper. Could I help you, ma'am? Oh, no, thank you, dear. Sophie's here. Gee, Steve, this is great. This is swell. Oh, your mother and her, this is great. <coughs> Are home? Sure, from your mother's lap. Nobs, your, your father? Oh, no, that's Abraham Lincoln. Oh. Is that him? You know, the father of his country. Come along, children. Our dinner is served. Now, let me see. How am I going to seat you? Mr. Sterling dines with us about once, so uh, I think our newest guest, Mr. J and Mr. Sterling, my dear. Thank you, dear. <laughs> and Mr. Morrow, you may sit next to baby. Thanks. And now, Mr. Sterling, will you say grace? <coughs> Accept our thanks, O Lord for this food, and bless it to our use, for thy name's sake. Amen. I think I'll take these flowers off. Daffodils are lovely this time of year, but they're in the way. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. I hope you'll enjoy your supper, children. It's a very simple one, our regular Saturday night meal. But no one in the country can cook them as we New Englanders do. Boston beans. <clears throat> well, that's, that's splendid. Thank you. I'm so sorry Mr. Frosby could come tonight. Yes, I invited Mr. Frosby to come and have supper with us, but he couldn't. Marvelous stuff he's offering for sale. It ought to enrich many of our townspeople. Mr. Sterling, I, I don't know very much about stocks, but... If I were you, I wouldn't invest in any stock until I'd consulted my banker. Are you going to invest, Mark? Well, with my modest salary, of Blessed course, I... are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We didn't know you had company. Oh, that's all right, dear. We're sorry if we're intruding. Oh, no, you're not intruding. Just a couple of friends for supper. <laughs> oh, Steve, aren't you going? Going where? Well, your friends are cordially invited to attend the third annual hayride and dance. The choir leaders are getting very worthy. You'd like to go, wouldn't you, boy? Sure. Where'd you put my hat? Oh, wait a minute. There's plenty of time now, Danny. Come on, sit down, girls, and have a cup of coffee. Yes, please. Oh, Sophie, bring some coffee. Thank you. How are you? 
enjoy themselves. To some of us, that has been denied. But, oh, well. Oh, good evening. Good evening. What was Crosby doing here? Steve, I've just made a wonderful investment that will make you and your sister independent for life. You bought his stock? Yes, dear. And you gave me a bond? Well, yes. Why? Nothing. Nothing. Ah, oh, Steve don't know anything about business. He don't know how those things are done. <laughs> you know, Mother, I think you'd better go to bed. You know, you had a hard day, all those people here and everything. Oh, always the nice little gentleman. <laughs> I believe I will. Come along, Cynthia, dear. Oh, Mother. Cynthia? Well, gee, I had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Good, morning. Good night. Good night, boys. Good night. Steve will show you where you're going to sleep tonight. Sure. Good night. Happy dreams. Bye, dear. Where are you going? You heard what I told that guy, Andy. Not with that catch or not. You think I'm going to stand by and see him rob my mother? Shh. Give me that gun. Come on, get out of my way. Well, wake up here. No, wait a minute. Go on in there. I want to have a little talk with you. A cigarette. I don't want one. Smoke it. Now, Steve, you got to snap out of this. You're only a kid. You're going to marry Judy, ain't you? And you got a great home here. You got a wonderful mother. And just one shot out of that gat, and you're going to blow the whole works. 
You think I want to feed oh, him? Oh, forget it. Forget it, Steve. It's a suck game. Nobody but chumps uses guns. Did you ever see a guy go to the chair? Huh? Well, I did. I spent eight months in that condemned row. Watched them go one by one. Pals of mine. Guys that you'd say good morning to in the morning, and then you'd say good night at night. And then they'd go. And I'd wait day after day, week after week, month after month, wondering if I was going to be the next one to go. Let me tell you, that's no picnic, kid. Listening to the drone of that lousy motor and watching those lights go dim. Don't worry about Frosby. He'll be taken care of. Well taken care of. Say, what do you think Danny and I come up here for? To go on hay rides? Hi, Steve. There's the works. What's this? Your mother's bonds. Oh, say, gee, fellas, I... Oh, that's nothing. Oh, but listen, I can never... Oh, forget it. Say, Steve, we got a scram. We got a date. Besides, if you're seen around here with us, it'll break your parole, and you know what that means. And, Steve, we're going to tell Judy just exactly what you told us to tell her. Wait for wait. Make her believe it, will you? Steve, you're on the square with Judy, ain't you? 
You bet I am. That's all we wanted to know. Owen. Here's a little little piece of poetry I I copied out of a book. Give it to her for me, will you? Sure, Steve, sure. Hey, that's our Frank. Oh, no, wait a minute. Us. Well, is everybody on their toes? This is a tough bunch of bombers and a great baby, and you should see them slug. Yeah. Now, listen, fella. I've been in this can 40 years, and my one ambition is to get out. Oh, shut up. No, it's the window. The Institute I'm painted three times. You want it twice all cut the Guinness tree? Yes, and I had him sat down on me. Sat down on you? Yes. Electrocuted. Now go for his arm, will you? And now say, Louis and that other girl have to walk out on me. Just one week before this big. Now here's what I want you to do. I'm pretty old. I haven't got very far to go. But I'd be the happiest guy in any jail if I could cop this game today. Now, will you go in and fight and try and win for old Pop? Do that. 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 Show them that you're a gentleman. I want everything in this game on the up and up. Sure, sure. Right. sure. absolutely. Neil, well, then all right. Oh, wait. 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 Oh, one sees the gray walls and towers of dear old Benson Otto. Home again, pal. Yeah, and I'm glad to get back. Now, have you got that poem for Judy, your half-wit? Why, certainly. I got it right here. There you are. Picture hadn't busted out of here, you wouldn't have had a chance. Oh, yeah? Good luck. <laughs> Same to you. Oh, for 
a defense. I'll get that ball for you, Walt. Oh, let me oh, get it. Thanks. Oh, well, we'll get it back. Oh, we'll get it back. Okay to come in? Sorry to see you kids back here again. Oh, that's all right, kid. I told him I'd be back. And I never break my word. Besides, I'll tell you, it wasn't so much fun out there, you might think. You know, traveling around by yourself all alone. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Say, what are you going to do, kid? I don't know. I'll go back to the old racket, I suppose. <laughs> no, no. No, no, you won't go back to the old racket. You're going right to New England. New England. Sure. Steve's waiting for you. <laughs> Steve's waiting for me. Well, I'm telling you he's waiting. Listen, he gave us a message to give to you. He, listen, he told us to tell you. He t uh, What's that message that he gave us? Well, he, he told us to tell you all about uh, the birds and uh, the lilacs, you know, flowers, and uh, the blue skies and uh, and to love what comes but once. Well, the meat of the whole thing is you're to go back to New England. Yeah, yeah. Now, what, what he's trying to tell you is this. You know, you know, the birds is singing, and the, and the flowers, and the, and the, and the river is kind of, it's, it's pretty, ain't it? And it's all, it's... Well, listen, here's the dough for you to go back there with. I don't need it. Sure you do. Them Chinese mannequin coats cost a lot of jack. Chinese coats? Well, certainly Steve's going to take you to China. We told you that, didn't we? Sure. Tokyo, Honolulu, all them Chinese towns. Say, are you kidding? No. You mean Steve is really waiting for me? Say, what the heck? Listen, baby, I'm telling you on my word. And I never break my word. That's one thing I'll say for the louse. Hey, Sam. Now, oh, here's your big chance. We're gonna send you in there to hit that ball. Do you think you can do it? Sure, Pop. That's a boy. Okay. Now listen. If ever you lay down an apple in your life, lay on this one. It's our only chance to win. You'll do that for your old pals, won't you? Sure. All right. Do it for Pop. Do it for the boy. Come on, I'll Come on. Come on. So you're the fellow that never breaks his word. Oh, now listen, Warden, I'm sorry about that. But honest, I had to leave in such a hurry that I just couldn't say goodbye. Now that this doubled your sentences, don't you? All right, I'll read them. Gee, that makes me 286 years. I won't need that. Take them to the cooler. Oh, Daddy, 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 Judy's scoring them. We're losing the ball game. Huh? Yeah? That's right, Chief. Three runs behind. Hang them to the cooler. Send St. Louis and Uncle Dad to the cooler when we're losing the ball game. Oh, now, listen, Warden. You're not going to do that. There's Gene and the gang waiting for us out there. we got to win that ball game. Look here, St. Louis. Can I trust you and Dan to go out to that diamond without leaving us? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you my word. And you know that I never break my word. No? Well, never twice in succession. Hang him the cooler. After the game.
Why is a fireman wear red suspenders? Keep his trousers up. <laughs> Say, St. Louis, you know that fellow McDowell on the other side? Now, don't give him a high ball. Keep him down and close to him. I don't care if there was a rumble seat on the car, if there was a rumble seat. If it hadn't been for you, we wouldn't be spending a month in the Will you up. shut up about that rumble seat? Take that cigar out of your mouth. You're a traitor. Take All it out. All right. And I'm telling you, there was a rumble seat. I don't care if there was. Ever since I met you, I've been in trouble. Yeah, well, you know, you're no turning point. If that's a chicken farm with me, you wouldn't be in here. I know there was no rubble seat on the bar. Will you shut up?